Okay, so I'm going to talk about uh, breaking the GPU memory wall without breaking performance. And basically it's going to be about large language model and the new challenges due to the increasingly bigger uh, models and what DDN can do uh, for you to help you uh, with these new uh, large mo models. So <clears throat> in the past few years, like we've seen a 1,000 increase in uh, model size. Uh, so basically, if you look at the number of neurons we have per AI model, it has increased, uh, it has been multiplied by 1,000. And there was a paper that was published in 2020 uh, called Scaling Laws for Neural Language Model. And basically what they showed is that the more neurons you have in your model, the smarter your model gets. And so you need less training steps and you less need the same amount of training data to get a more intelligent AI. And that's why we've seen an explosion in model size in a few years. And where uh, 10 years ago, we talked in um, millions of parameters per AI model, so parameters equals neurons, basically. And then we talked into uh, billions of parameters. And now we are starting to talk into trillions of parameters per uh, AI model, and he even hundreds of trillions of parameters per model. And basically, the horizontal line that you can see here, it represents how many neurons a GPU can have can, 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 can have in uh, GPU memory. And you can see that around 2020, it's not possible anymore to put a complete model on a single GPU. So uh, what, what's been done is that the models are scattered across many GPUs. The question is, is that sustainable? Because if we, if, if we see uh, another 1,000 increase in the next few years, we might need hundreds of thousands of GPUs or even more. Um, and that's what is called the GPO memory wall. And uh, so neurons, it's a metric, but that's not something we use in storage. We prefer to use gigabytes. So here you have four AI models. From uh, left to right, you get a small model on the left, and on the right, it's uh, like a future model that doesn't exist yet, I would say. And you can see at the, the bottom line, it shows how many gigabytes you need to store the neurons of the model to run inference. And you can see that we used to have 3.5 gigabytes of memory needed to store a complete model in GPU memory, which was fine. And since GPT-3, GPT-4, and future models that haven't been um, released yet, uh, we are seeing, we are talking for GPT-3 in 100 of gigabytes. And for GPT-4, if we consider it's a 1 trillion parameter model, we, we talk into uh, terabytes of data. And for future model here, uh, it's like 24 trillion parameters, so it's around 24 times GPT-4. It's 44 terabytes of GPU memory. And basically, if you, uh, in terms of how many GPUs would you need to store that? So basically, how many GPUs would you need just to run the model? Uh, we, we, can, we are talking around 500 to 1,000 GPUs just to run it. And that's just for inference. And so when we, uh, for training or fine tuning, you can multiply that number from anything from one to 10, basically. So thousands of GPUs just to store, just to run the model. So how can we break the GPU memory wall? How can we uh, run those uh, large models? Uh, so basically, it's really simple. On the left, you get uh, what uh, has been done so far, which is that, uh, we scatter the model across many GPUs, and basically the aggregated GPU memory that you have represents the maximal model you can train. And the solution is, instead of doing that, what you can do is to store uh, the parameters on a cold storage, and throughout the run, the parameters are swapped from the cold storage to the GPU uh, throughout the runs. And in that case, you can just uh, put many hard drives and basically can train any model at any size. So we solved uh, the issue. That was easy, isn't it? So the issue is it's not uh, free lunch. And you have some huge requirements if you want to do that efficiently. So efficiently means that your GPU is fully used, basically. And the two requirements are in terms of capacity, uh, which is on the left. And I've, uh, so those numbers are from Microsoft, uh, from their uh, zero infinity paper. And on the left, you can see for training how much memory you need to run these models. So basically, it ranges from two terabytes of memory 
up to two petabytes of memory. So you can see how we are in uh, in parallel file system territory in terms of memory needed to store these models. And in terms of, of throughput, if you want to do that cold storage to GPU uh, transfer, you need uh, a, a really high throughput. It's based on your GPU, of course, and it can range from 2 gigabyte per GPU up to 300 gigabyte per GPU uh, for uh, the future GPUs that haven't been invented yet. So we have a system actually that can uh, break the GPU memory wall without breaking performance. And that's our DDNAI 400X2. It's an uh, all flash appliance uh, with a sequential read performance up to 90 gigabyte per second, a sequential write performance up to 65 gigabyte per second, and it, uh, with up to 3 million IOPS, and it's uh, all flash with 24 NVMEs um, drives. And basically what I want to say is that for each AI 400X2, basically you can store around uh, thousands, thousands of GPUs uh, in terms of memory. So of course you still need the GPUs for the computation, but it gives you how many GPUs you would save, uh, you, you might save, depending on how much computation you need, of course. Uh, so talk is cheap. So we ran a little experiment and to prove our point. Uh, so basically, we've taken an AI, and we have asked the AI to complete a sentence. And we measure, and so for example, it's I have, and the AI has to complete the sentence. And we measure how long it takes for the AI uh, to complete the, the, the sentence. And for that, we used a single GPU node with only eight GPUs, with only 40 gigabytes of memory per GPU, because that's all we had during our experiment. And on, on top of that, we added our AI Forum X2 that we connected through InfiniBand. Um, and so we provide a parallel file system to the, to the GPU node where we want to do our cold storage to GPU transfer, as I uh, said before. And we um, compared five different configurations. The first one is GPU only, so it's the previous method where you put everything in GPU memory. And the next one is uh, we use, as a cold target, we use the CPU memory of the GPU node. Then we use the local red zero of the, CPU, uh, of the uh, GPU node, um, an all-flash system. And also, we compare that with a traditional NFS system and also with our AI 400X2 appliance. <coughs> and so, for a really small, we started with a really small model, as I showed before, and this one fits basically in any GPU. And so, um, here, lower is better, and you can see on the, on the right, the results we've obtained. Uh, and basically it shows how much time it took for the AI to complete the sentence. And you can see that the fastest method for really small models is obviously uh, to put everything in GPU memory. Uh, and then the second next best target is when we offload those parameters uh, on the CPU memory to, um, as I presented before. And then the, the third best um, uh, solution for that is our storage which is already uh, 1.4 time uh, faster than doing that on the local red of uh, the, comp uh, the GPU node. And that's because uh, the local red of the GPU node doesn't really uh, have enough throughput, of, as I showed before, in the really high throughput. And even with all, uh, in, you may get that uh, throughput through a parallel fast system, but not from uh, your local red. And here, uh, we also have a 12 times speed up over NFS. I think there is nothing to say about that. Uh, the NFS doesn't compete for that test case at all. Um, and we increase the model size 100 times. And so here we are in GPT-3 ter territory, and we are talking about 350 gigabytes of uh, neurons, if you want. And you can see already, like, uh, it's out of memory for the GPU. So basically, you can't do that on a GPU uh, memory only. That wouldn't fit in GPU memory, so you would need more GPU for that, or you can use that offloading method, basically. And in that specific case, we actually obtained the same performance than using the CPU as a cold target, using our uh, AI 400X2, and we have a close to two times speed up over the local red of the, of the node, and a 17 times speed up over NFS. But we went further, and we uh, increased we are still using a single GPU node, uh, a single GPU node with uh, uh, eight GPUs, and we uh, try to run inference on the GPT-4 uh, GPT uh, model, and here we have 2.3 terabytes of uh, neurons, basically, and it doesn't fit neither on GPU memory nor on CPU uh, memory anymore, uh, it's too big, 
And uh, we can see that the best solution for that is to use our AI uh, 400X2 for, uh, to obtain the best performance. And the next uh, one is red, and again we get a uh, 16 speed up over NFS. And we went even further than that, and basically we asked the AI to complete a sentence using a synthetic model that is 24 times uh, DPT4 uh, size on a single AGPU node. And uh, basically your model size is 44 terabytes uh, in size. And as you can see here, uh, basically uh, all of the CPU, there is not enough CPU memory, there is not enough GPU memory, and there is not enough capacity even on your local RAID. And uh, it's the same for the NFS uh, file system in that case. So here I just wanted to emphasize that it's a throughput problem. It's not a latency one because you know exactly what you're going to load, what, what are the neurons you're going to transfer between uh, your calls target and your, and your uh, GPUs. And so here we measured the throughput and we compared the AI 400X2 with the local red of the GPU node. And basically what we see is that the, the more throughput you get, the, the better the performance is. And that ratio is, exact, is exactly the same than the inference performance uh, that I showed just before. So it's really a, a throughput question. And with our uh, AI 400X2 appliance, we can scale that number uh, as you can just add more AI 400X2 and you would increase the throughput of the system. But that's basically all for this presentation. And what I would like you to remember basically is that for AI at scale, uh, you have to have a system-wide approach. So of course, GPUs are important, and that's going to be the main focus for you. But you should consider also uh, a future-proof solutions where you can add our DDN storage, for example. And it would enable you uh, to use or to do experimentations uh, at any scale, even if you don't have enough uh, GPU memory for that. And so for a long-term approach, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you, should want, you should have a system-wide approach for, uh, uh, for AI at scale. So that's all for uh, the presentation.